Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Making My Own Damn Pesto. Okay, so, in case you're wondering, pesto based on basil, okay, garlic, salt, and pepper, and lemon juice. And traditionally, it has pine nuts in it. I actually prefer to use macadamia nuts. It gives me a little lighter flavor. If I want something a little earthier, I go for Brazil nuts. Now, uh, the pesto you buy at a store will also have cheese in it. I make my pesto vegan. I can put cheese on my pasta if I want to. Now, you can make all this just by blending it appropriately in a food processor. Okay. Be sure to rinse your bagel first, or your basil first. It even says so on the label. I like to customize mine, however. English peas. You gotta boil, you gotta cook them first, boil them for about 90 seconds, uh, and then douse them in ice to cool them off. Throw them in just like you're gonna throw in the basil. And then my favorite pesto ingredient, nettles. Also known as steaming nettles. Now, you'll notice I'm not actually touching them, and that's because the steaming nettles is accurate. If you wanna put those in your pesto, you gotta boil them for about a minute and a half, two minutes, you gotta pull them off the stems first, just use the leaves, and make sure you use gloves when you do it. If not, you will immediately know why I'm telling you to use gloves when you do it. So, I'm gonna boil the peas, I'm gonna strip down the, the, uh, the leaves off of the stinging nettles and boil them, and I'll meet you back here in about an hour to make the, actually make the pesto. So here's an example of what the nettles look like. Okay. You don't want the stems in there, but you, so you gotta peel off the leaves. I'm gonna put them in here. And then after I've collected them all, that's when I'm gonna boil them in the water. Okay. Oh, and you wanna keep the water that you boil them in because it makes really good anti-inflammatory tea. Weird, I know, it's something that's stinging makes anti-inflammatory tea, but it's actually really, really good for you. So about a half hour later, all the stems are removed from our stinging nettles, okay. uh, they're gonna be composted. And again, make sure you wear gloves when you do that. Don't push your luck. And now, two Trader Joe's units of worth of basil, dutifully rinsed off, just like the label says. Okay. I broke my salad spinner, so I can't use that to get it completely dry. So there will be some water uh, left on the basil. Right? Yeah. Squeeze it with as much as I can, but there's still going to be some water in there. Can't help that. But from here, the basil can just go straight into the food processor. So the English peas have been boiling for about a minute. It's now time to rinse and cool them. Notice I use English peas. Sugar peas have a little more sugar than I like. So I dump them in a colander to drain the water. I'm keeping the water because I'm going to use it for my nettles next. Cool them off quickly. Got a bucket of ice waiting for them. Just stir it around. So now the stinging nettles are boiling. I'll boil them for about 90 seconds. And then I will do the same thing that I just did with the English peas. Except I will save the water, not because I'm gonna reuse it, but because it makes an awesome anti-inflammatory tea. So it has boiled, I have kept the water and now they're gonna go into the ice to cool off. So all my green things are now in there. Okay. There's my basil, there's my English peas, and there's my boiled stinging nettles. Right. Now the garlic. I could throw it in there like so into the food processor, but I don't actually trust it. I don't want a big chunk of garlic in my pesto. Right? So I use my garlic press to break it down and then throw it into the, the food processor. Right. So the garlic's going in, as well as the lemon juice. Okay. A squeezer helps a great deal. Right. And then I'll throw in my macadamia nuts. Yep. If you go too heavy with the nuts, that's okay. It will end up a little like hummus rather than pesto, but you still got all the green in there, so it's just the world's greenest hummus. And then you know, salt and pepper to taste, of course. And of course, our friend the olive oil, the stuff that makes it a sauce. 
And now to food process the heck out of it. probably have to smoosh it down a couple of times during the process, but you will end up with one lovely, lovely pesto.